a market cap of circa 183 million today, Canadian. Year high, $1.55, 102 today. So obviously you've come off a bit there. Um, I know you're gonna argue with me that's the market is responsible for that, everyone does. But you know, what's, what's the plan for this year in terms of addressing that? I know you're, you've done you know, a few interviews and so forth, but there's gotta be more to it. So what are you up to? Yeah, so, so if, uh, if we just back up a bit into 2018, you know, our, our work in 2018 was to deliver the PEA for the, for the Camino Rojo oxide portion of the project, which we did, um, get the feasibility started, uh, hire a couple of important people, operational leadership, enter me, uh, financial leadership, and enter our CFO Etienne, and graduate to the TSX. Frankly, you know, that uh, alone doesn't uh, help the share price. So we, we need to do some things this year that, uh, that will reverse that trend. Um, and some of the catalysts this year that uh, investors can expect is we will have the feasibility on that same project delivered by mid-year. Uh, we'll need to submit for permits so that we're ready for construction. Uh, and we'll do that mid-year of this year. Uh, obtaining construction financing. Keep in mind that the financing required for this project uh, is quite modest at 125 million capital cost. Uh, so in a difficult market that you described, I think that's an important uh, element. Um, so completing those three will set us up for construction next year and gold production in 2021. And as we deliver on those business results, investors should be rewarded. But another real opportunity uh, for the company and investors is if we are able to reach an agreement with our neighbors. Fresneo is the neighbor. Um, and we've studied what, uh, what, a layback, what we call a layback agreement, the, the ability to, to bigger our open pit onto their property. And, and it could double the value of the Camino Ro Rojo oxide portion of the project. Uh, so that catalyst alone will, will create a significant opportunity for investors. So it'll do double the value, which you hope will have a knock on effect on the share price. Yeah. To, what's know, the timing and all of that? I mean, that, that you're in discussion with these guys. So all of those things uh, that I described, those four things are, are timed this year. Uh, we'll talk about different things for next year and what we need to achieve there. Uh, and to answer your question on where we are in the discussions with Fresnil, uh, they started uh, prior to my arrival uh, at Orla at the end of last year, Pierre and Chuck, who we mentioned, uh, started the discussions. Those discussions continued upon my arrival. Um, Fresneo is a big mining company, as you know, and uh, and they have lots to do. Uh, but we've had some very good conversations with them, uh, which have included us signing a CA uh, with them, exchanging data. So, um, so both sides have had an opportunity now to assess that data and understand what's on each other's concession. Uh, and that should lead to a subsequent uh, discussion of, of what a deal would look like. And uh, I believe that uh, in the in the material that I've seen, that there is an opportunity for both us and for Zneil, and uh, and we'll work towards uh, finding uh, that agreement this year. And and so, what are the options there in terms of like you you, you come to some sort of agreement over you know what each other's got, you mine it, they mine it, you mine it, they process. I mean, how do, how does it all, all work? Yeah. So so in any agreement, it's important to understand what you know what the, what the interests of the other side are, and and we've been able to have that discussion with Octavio at. Uh, at first Neo and and uh, and they've described to us quite clearly what what they would be interested in. So it would be an Orla mining operation, uh, and and our ability to mine it, I think, is is clear with our experience on the management team. Uh, so it would be our operation. Uh, they don't have um, enough resources on their side uh, to create their own uh, mining opportunities. So so they'll be able to monetize the amount of resources they have on their concession through uh, putting it on our heat bleach. Um, and so now we just need to discuss uh, how much uh, that's worth. Um, and, uh, and, and we've discussed all the, the different options we could have to, uh, uh, to share the benefit, everything from NSR to, uh, um, uh, to royalties and so on. And, and it, it, for, for Zneo, I think the, the solution will, will be in cash, not all up front, uh, likely a staged approach, uh, similar to a, an agreement that they most recently made with with Argonaut. Right. Okay. So they they would whatever portion, however you split it, 
they put in cash according to that agreement. Okay, we've mentioned some pretty big names on the board. You think you'll find it easy to raise cash in this market? I mean, because the project I, I think you're talking about is a se currently seven year life of mine, just yeah. over a three year payback at about yeah. a 25 with a 25 percent IRR. So these are modest, but you'd look to build it out with a Fresneo opportunity. I get, I get that. So where's the capital come from? Do you think that's going to be cheap money or is it a case of, you know, needs must and you, you'll take what the market gives you? Yeah. Uh, and so uh, that's one of the uh, pieces of work that, that I mentioned we're doing this year. Uh, Etienne, our CFO, a 12 year gold corp veteran is, is leading that for us. I also have some experience raising money for building mines in Mexico at Torx. We raised $375 million as a one third portion of the money we needed to build that $800 million project. Um, so I'd say, you know, the, the quantum that we need to raise is, is more modest than that. Mm -hmm. uh, the market uh, is not as good. And so, um, so what we'll do to raise that money uh, um, will be uh, a division of likely equity and debt. Um, and a starting point for us will be 50% equity, 50% debt. And, it, and as I've already mentioned, an important uh, piece of that puzzle is understanding who uh, you know, our lee orders uh, would be. Uh, some of our important equity investors, and we've mentioned Pierre, has expressed a, an interest to participate on the debt side. Um, so uh, based upon my contacts and Etienne's and in the banking communities, um, uh, private equity firms and others, I think that we'll be able to put a package together by the end of the year um, that is uh, is a mixture of that at a cost of capital um, uh, that's reasonable for a company our size. Um, we've had some recent examples in the marketplace of teams uh, um, about our size of, of building up financing packages. So I think um, the distinction for us is is we have a, a portion uh, of of the commitment already spoken for, mm -hmm. uh, and we'll need to find the remainder this year. And obviously, you've done a PEA, and you're, you, it's about optimizing, you know, where you can go with this. That's 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 the name of the game. But the other the other way of um, tackling this is, I guess, looking at what you've got and what you focus your time on. So you're you're focused on Mexico, and then maybe the ox, oxide down in in Panama, and then you come back for the sulfur. So you've kind of got a a. a a line of work or a line of sight of what you can what you can tackle, yeah. but you're doing you're doing smaller chunks. Is that a reflection because of the way the market is at the moment, or that's? I mean, how have you come up yeah, with that strategy? I, I, I certainly um, believe that uh, that the Orla strategy is is a pragmatic one that is based upon what uh, is possible in the current market. The current market you know, um, has some challenges, but also has some opportunities. The assets that we have uh, came out of the current market. And so um, so I think you've described it best in that we will take a sequential approach. That sequence starts with the perspective exploration ground you have. Having lots of good ground in, in a perspective area, you know, 206,000 hectares in an area that already has 12 operating mines, to um, you know, resources over 10 million ounces. I think that's a that's a good place to start uh, finding uh, development projects. So yes, it'll start with the with with the resources that are in the ground uh, and the ones that we uh, uh, drill for and and find. That creates a portfolio of development projects, which uh, which will be lined up uh, at this point sequentially based upon their uh, rate of return mm. um, and uh, and build a building. Uh, and, and to answer your question, would we do more than one at once um, in a different market, perhaps, if, if there was capital availability to do so? But in the current market, our, our ambitions are to do, do them sequentially one after the other, get into a cash producing pos position um, and create, you know, continue to create uh, cash producing lines. That, 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 it's just that simple.